I'm on a roll right now, y'all. Today we are going to talk about children with no fathers. Sydney's dad and his girlfriend, whom I've always liked and never had a problem with, have blocked me on Facebook today for some reason. A day after speaking to him, well, two days after speaking to him, and he was supposedly coming down to see her for Christmas or mail her her Christmas presents or whatever. And five days ago, his girlfriend messaged me. I mean, no beef. So I don't know what's going on. Um, Sydney's heart's broken. I mean, he's just completely pulled himself out the picture. And whether it's temporary or not, it's permanent for me. It's just the last straw. So, long story short on this without putting too much drama on, um, Sydney, first of all, knows her father. She knows her father, God, you know, irregardless of everything going on, he, she knows he won't leave her. But what I want to talk about today is as much as our children are loved and their blessings in our lives, we set ourselves up for these troubles. That's why I haven't had another child yet. I don't want one until I'm married. And if I don't get married, then I don't want a child to be brought into this world with a part-time or, or no-time father. You know, I just want harmony and I want a family. And it just blows my mind. Like, I don't understand how someone can bring a child into this world and not love them. Like... They're so beautiful and they're the only part of innocence that we have in this world. And y'all are sitting around like, oh, it's going to cost too much money. Like the moms don't have to spend all this money anyway. But, you know, that's anger talk and I don't mean to go there. But the only way that we're going to stop all these deadbeat dads is to stop <laughs> pretty much being deadbeat women at the time that we lay down and open our legs to these men. You know, like I thank God that. I don't have a big family to take care of on my own. And I'm not saying that in any judgment to anybody that does, you know, it sucks. We made mistakes and the children are not mistakes, but the men were, that's just real. Like we were dumb to lay down, you know, but the difference between then and now is that we have the choice now to make the decision now to respect ourselves and our children now enough to not make that mistake again. Because we see how much pain we, we see our children go through when these fathers aren't in their lives on a daily basis. When they don't have that family harmony. You know what I mean? Because it was just something that we wanted at the moment. Immediate gratification. Sexual satisfaction. We didn't think anything about the consequences that were going to come from it. And that's part of what marriage is for. In the Bible it says you should marry when you burn so passionately for somebody that you just can't go another day without them. But it goes beyond that as well. It goes down to love. Like who's going to stick there, stick by for you thick and thin? Who's going to be your friend? Who's going to respect you? Who's going to respect both of y'all's child when y'all come into this earth? So many women I know right now are being beaten by their men, being pretty much sexually harassed by their men. You can call it rape because it's not every time that you say yes and they still want it and you want a man around so bad that, you know, you do it anyway. Even though you're saying yes, your heart and your spirit saying no, but you do it just to keep that man that's not even the man God has for you around. You're raping yourself, you know. You're raping these kids of, of opportunity. You're raping these kids of innocence because they're seeing men coming in and out your life. I can't even say I've been perfect on that one, y'all. I mean, that's why I'm, I just want to do better. I want to get closer to God. I want to know that God's like my only father, my only man. I don't want nobody but him right now. I don't. I don't, I'm tired of these deadbeat dads. And the fact of the matter is, as deadbeat as they are, we allowed it to happen. So we can hate them and blame them all we want. Oh, he didn't squat and he doesn't do this for her and he doesn't know anything. I quit being angry about it because you know what? Nobody told me to lay down with him. Nobody told me to give my soul and my spirit and my body to that man. Nobody. So how can I be mad at him for doing what a man does when a woman is weak enough? But a man of God, <laughs> I'll tell you about a man of God. I haven't met him, or if I have met him, he's already married, and I just am, am grateful that that woman's happy. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, and second of all, don't don't take someone else's man. You'll never have him, and if you do, he'll do the same thing you did to somebody else. And if you don't, then God's still going to deal with you, because you can't take somebody else's husband. Just don't go down that road. That's not right, y'all. It's not right. But these men, 
a man of God, even if you did try to step to him like that, he would respect himself enough to not play himself like that with a deadbeat woman. And we can't even call ourselves women when we're running around just wanting to have sex. Not respecting ourselves enough to know what the love of God is through a man. So stop being angry at all these men for not being there for their kids. When you knew what you were doing when you laid down. Like, it doesn't make sense. Be mad at yourself and then get over it and forgive yourself, you know. But if you're going to be mad at anybody, deal with yourself. Because he knew what he was doing. You knew what he was doing, but you fell for the game. You fell for the lies. You fell for all that stuff just because you wanted to get what you wanted at that moment. So who is really to blame? And who is really the victim? These kids are the victim. You have one child after another with different men. And these kids suffer. They grow up never knowing what love is. They grow up thinking that it's okay for a man to beat on them or for a man to use them for sex or for a man to treat them any kind of way because that's what they saw their mama do. And that's real. That's real, man. And it's wrong. It's wrong to do your children like that. You really want to be a good mom? You really want to claim that you're a good mom? Stop that junk. Stop it. Respect your child enough if you can't respect yourself to close your legs and let these men tell tell these men hey you know what I've had enough and yeah that used to be me but you know what try to step to me now because I guarantee you I'll shut the door in your face you know and don't come from anger because you're going to turn away the good men too but change yourself first so that the good men can see you anointed fire check her out because she's real how can a good man see you and he's certainly not going to be interested if you're acting like a hussy If you're acting like you'll take anything that comes your way. And they will all try you just to see where you're at. They'll all try you. They want to know that they're dealing with a good woman. So if you're opening up on the first night. If you're opening up before marriage. It's up to you what kind of man you get. And what kind of man you receive. Stop blaming them. Because you made that choice. You made the choice to sleep with him. And your kids are suffering because of it. The only way to save your family, you and your child, the only way to save that and to to have harmony and to have peace and love and, and change in your home is for you to change yourself because it's not up to the child to change you. And it's not up to the child to bring the dad back. And it's not up to your, it's not up to what's between your legs to keep the man coming back. You're teaching your child the same thing that you're doing. How can they know any different? Especially if they don't have a father around. You're all they know. And whoever's around you. (laughs) Y'all better wake up. Wake up. Session. December 19th. 2015. I'm not even mad at him. It doesn't even matter. I mean. It is what it is. But it matters to Sydney. It, It matters to her. And it hurts her so much. And if she didn't know God. Oh my God. I know she'd be hurting even worse right now. But we owe it to the kids to break these chains and do something different. If you're not ready to to be a godly woman, then don't expect a godly man. And if you're so ready to have sex back to back to back to back to back, then expect babies and expect a disease and expect bad things to happen and expect all that. Because it's not right. God says it's not right. Hold fast for the Lord. And hold fast for your kids, man. Because you see what this world's coming to. There's too many fatherless children out there. And I hate I brought her into the world without a family. I love her. And I, oh, I love my baby. She's the light of my life. But I won't have another one without a man with it. I won't. And a ring. And I'm not going to just say yes to anybody. I want God to send me that man. I want these children out here to be saved and have a chance. And all we're doing to them is hurting them. Destroying them from the time they're born. And the only way to fix it is to give the problem to God. You will never be able to fix it on your own. Even if you get rich and don't have any issues and everything's easy. That's what your child's going to think too. Make it right. We've had so many years of making it wrong and messing up and doing the wrong thing and blaming everybody else. Make it right. Make it right. By giving yourself and your child to the Lord. 
stop the madness and stop the BS and stop the drama and stop causing problems when you were the problem. Thank you. I don't even know if I could pray this one out, God. I just ask that you help all the single mothers out there. And help us bring our families back together. Help us fix ourselves so that we can be renewed by you. So that if we are entitled to a man of God, that, that we're able to receive him and not push him away, thinking he's just like everybody else. Thank you for helping us hold fast in our celibacy. And not only by our celibacy, but the renewal of our mind by trusting and loving you, God. Help Sydney, man. Help all these children out here that have no father. Help them be able to receive you so they always have you as their father, so they know love. Amen.